Ja. Hello everybody. Um, this is Nisha Parveen representing Trade Promotion Council of India and I extend a warm welcome to each of you to this exclusive Tech Trail Blazer series. Today we have with us Mr. Koshik Banerjee, co-founder and CEO of News Technologies. And News Technologies is a company in the field of anti-counterfeit, temper evidence, warranty fraud detection and tracking. It uncovers the hidden cost of counterfeits in the supply chain, and it provides the itemized view and improves the traceability of your goods. Mr. Banerjee has over 20 years of experience in leading R&D, product development, marketing, and operations across diverse industries and company sizes. We hope that, that today's discussion would be a great discussion with Mr. Banerjee. And in today's discussion, we would like to in we would like to have Mr. Banerjee's perspective and vision for new technologies and also his views, you know, on the logistics solutions for other businesses. I would like to welcome Mr. Koshik Banerjee to our platform and um, I would like to say thank you for accepting our invitation and you know sparing your time during your busy schedule. Thank you, Nisha. I mean, uh, really appreciate the invitation and uh, I definitely see this as an opportunity for us also uh, mm -hmm. to kind of uh, come and share our thoughts uh, as you have indicated uh, and also for uh, new and upcoming entrepreneurs, uh, right, uh, especially in the deep tech space, for example, uh, who understand, um, I mean, that there are aspects beyond technology that we need to account for. Um, again, really appreciate uh, the invitation to be on this platform. And thank you. Uh, thanks to all your viewers for uh, looking us up. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, it is our pleasure. So uh, without waiting any further, uh, we can start the discussions, you know, with your permission, of course. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my first question to you is, um, like, what inspired you know you to established establishment of new technologies, and what core values does the company prioritize in its operations? So, um, if you see, I mean, the um, we are focused on counterfeiting as the, or rather, anti counterfeit. Um, as a primary goal. Uh, right. So that being said, uh, I mean, if you look at the uh, scale of counterfeiting globally today, uh, right, and uh, more important, the lack of viable solutions, uh, right, has made this problem very interesting, right? So we also noted that, uh, say, unlike other industries, which have been keeping pace with times with regard to, um, say, digital innovation or innovation across the space, right? I mean, uh, so packaging, uh, unfortunately, has been sort of uh, a legard, uh, right? And this is globally, right? So only recently we are seeing some innovation in, uh, say, maybe environment or eco-friendly packaging and stuff like that. But the security space itself uh, is even less cared for, uh, right? And what is also interesting on the other side uh, is that uh, the this particular space is growing significantly year on year, uh, right? I mean, and uh, stands today somewhere around say two hundred billion dollars globally, uh, right? So which means there is a vacuum in the space where uh, there are no solutions available, right? And we figured that maybe we can come and uh, once we understand the space good enough we can come and provide a solution which can sort of fill in that vacuum, right? So at News, our goal uh, is to protect um, customers or consumers, right? By helping brands adopt from a range of advanced packaging security solutions, right? Uh, that fit into their manufacturing process and cost structure, uh, right? Because every brand has a different cost structure and different process, right? Uh, whether it's a Louis Vuitton or a pharma company or an FMCG company, for example, right? So we need solutions which sort of uh, work within, with their process or within their process, right? And also because the cost structure of the products are different. So you need solutions which sort of also fit into that, right? So it should be a viable solution uh, for the brands. And something at the end is the goal is to protect the consumers and the brand. Right. 
I mean, that's exactly, you know, the, a lot of the issues a lot of uh, companies faces, you know, and then uh, the, their products are not able to reach to their uh, target customers. Right. So my moving on, my next question to you is, uh, you know, like, could you provide insights into the key objective and strategic goals of NOS technologies, particularly in terms of its role in transforming the transportation, logistics and supply chain industry? Sure. Uh, so today, if you look at the most companies measure their operational efficiency, right, which is like, okay, uh, I have a certain demand for my products, for example, right? Uh, and then, okay, am I running my, I have my factories or uh, manufacturing uh, in place, right? And am I, what is the utilization rate for that manufacturing, right? Am I running at 80, 85, 90, 95%? sort of manufacturing, right? Which means that I am running my, my factory is almost producing whatever it can produce, right? At the maximum possible extent, right? And then uh, we understand from a, a research report that, okay, this is the need in the industry, right? And how, so we are sort of, and there is a match to this, right? Which for any executive finance guy, that's the, you can say the key performance indicator, right? That I, whatever the uh, need is there in the market, say people buy coconut oil, for example, right? So there are multiple brands in the coconut oil and there are certain segment leaders and then there are followers, right? So a leader would say, okay, this is the uh, demand in the uh, industry and I am, um, and we are seeing year on year certain percentage of growth based on say market research, for example, uh, right? And then I would sort of, what they would look at, okay, am I able to sort of fulfill the demand in my factory? And is my factory running at, say, near 100% uh, utilization? Right? There is, though, the problem, though, is that there is a gap in this understanding of what the demand is, right, due to counterfeiting. So if you are saying globally counterfeiting, uh, there is a loss of $4.5 trillion, for example, right? And again, there is no hard uh, number to this, right? Which means there is an untapped demand in the market which the brands are not fulfilling today, the original brands, right? So a, a company probably is doing 100 crores of business, right? Probably can become 150 crores, can do, right? Uh, because then they simply are not aware of the demand of the market which is being fulfilled through counterfeits, right? So uh, in that sense, the uh, idea of how the market is growing, what is the actual demand uh, is misunderstood, uh, right? And again, nobody can put a hard number to what that number is, right? But what we believe uh, uh, is certainly possible is that if brands can adopt a more secure track and trace system, uh, right? And if they make it a point that every consumer like you and me, we sort of say authenticate or we verify or there is some sort of engagement with the consumers that we sort of uh, let the brand know that we are buying a product, right? Whether it's an original, whether it's a duplicate unknowingly that we are purchasing, but the brand gets to know that, okay, uh, this many of my products are original and this many are uh, counterfeit, for example, right? And if you can trace that back across your supply chain, right? And even if you don't need, you don't even need to do that, right? I mean, if you just understand that category, you sort of get a, uh, and there will never be 100% authentication, right? I mean, every consumer is not going to verify, right? But you can sort of uh, extrapolate that number and understand what is your unfulfilled demand, right? That you're not aware of. A brand doesn't know what the demand is because every purchase or attempted purchase of a counterfeiting product, right? Is an unfulfilled demand that is not being bred made by the brand. Hmm. Right, I, sir. I, I hope uh, I understood. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Loose Technology aims to provide, you know, like a competitive edge to business uh, worldwide to understand, you know, what are their, uh, un, you know, like un, uh, untapped, you know, market or demand. How does the company, right. you know, like differentiate itself from other players in the industry, particularly concerning innovation and technological solutions? Okay. So, um, 
it's an interesting question uh, i mean and, and when we looked at this piece uh, in particular right so we saw that um, the most commonly used uh, solution in the market today globally again uh, right uh, they sort of lie on the extremes of the spectrum right and what i mean by that is um so on one side you have very easy um or most, most commonly used technologies like say holograms qr codes and stuff like that right i mean they're easy of course and they're typically additive in nature right? which means like say uh, first hologram came and then um, okay people wanted to move into digital so they started putting qr code for example into it uh, right then uh, you said okay no no this qr code is being duplicated so people started saying okay we'll I put two qr codes one will be hidden one will be visible right so these are all additives right i mean they're sort of adding one on top of uh, one on top of other right so this is one side right of course these are very cheap uh, to use commonly used so everybody i think there are no questions asked so it's really cost game business uh, right so companies will negotiate because there probably will be thousand players who will be providing uh, say hologram for it. or um, thousand is a small number but uh, there will be in lakhs or hundreds thousands right then you know other side if you see you have um, forensic grade security like those used in uh, say currency notes for example bonds passports and stuff like that right any uh, typically any government uh, based stuff right so um, forensic grade of course they provide uh, very high security uh, right uh, but what are also it entails is the um, you can say the complexity in the verification or authentication of the technology right which means that uh, we know when uh, demonetization happened and after that 2000 rupees note came there are a lot of copies which are floating around right and then there are a lot of misinformation also like the government has installed a chip or something so every time you put the money people will get to know about it and stuff yes. I, i'm sure you remember uh, yes right? i remember so, and even yes uh, i do uh, so but we know it is not possible to put anything inside that note, uh, right? So, which means that the lack of information, uh, right, uh, prevented uh, or rather led to rumor, right? That was one part. The second thing is, I mean, if you leave the rumors part aside, today there are just so many features in a currency note, you say whether in India or US or any other country, for example, right? First, the consumers or the citizens of the country, they are not made aware of all the features, right? Some of them are kept secret on purpose, uh, right? Because, see, as consumers, when we are aware, the counterfeiter is also, <laughs> they will also be aware. So they'll try to replicate, right? So one reason is that they they are, because if I am told to look for 100 different things, the consumer knows what to go and duplicate now, right? And this is all visual, right? Which means I have to kind of look at it, right? Or in certain cases, like we go to a bank, they will use a UV machine to do some preliminary scan, right? But the fact also is that if you take a very good counterfeit um, note to a bank, for example, even the bank uh, personnel, they cannot tell whether the note is originally duplicate, right? So the, it has to go to a lab to be kind of examined for its authenticity. And there were some, I, I think there were some series also made uh, I don't remember the name, but there was something in Netflix or something. There was a series where somebody was an expert counterfeiter and they would counterfeit uh, notes and stuff like that, right? So, which means that you also have the solution, which is very good. It cannot be duplicated probably in its entirety uh, or a combination of solutions which cannot be integrated uh, in its entirety. But one is the consumer education becomes a bottleneck, right? Because you cannot educate everyone, uh, right? Uh, second, it is typically visual or it requires a special device, all right? Which means you, me, cannot be carrying around a UV lamp, for example, every time you go and exchange notes. Right? Exactly. exactly. So, uh, right? So, which means that uh, you have, and then of course, uh, some of these technologies are um, restricted, which means it cannot be sold to a public, uh, it cannot be sold to a private company, for example, for public goods, for example, right? So you have these two extremes of very good or very good set of technologies and then you have very easy uh, uh, to use, easy to verify, but easily duplicated technology, right? So what, what we wanted to do at Moose was to sort of uh, do, can we build, instead of being an additive and instead of uh, being overly complex where education is required to verify 
um, say the authenticity of a product, for example, right? Can we make a very uh, advanced security technology which can be verified simply using a smartphone, right? Without me needing to know what is what all is going underneath it, right? So that was our goal that, okay, I just run a scan like I'm doing an UPI payment, for example, right? But I don't know what all is happening in the back end, right? But I know I am paying money to someone or I'm receiving money from someone, right? And I am clueless about what's happening, right? So we have built a technology which sort of behaves like that, right? That I have no clue what is happening. I just see something and I scan it and it tells me at the end that whether this is authentic or fake. And the brands are immediately also made aware that, okay, somebody has just run a scan at certain look anywhere in the world for example at this particular time uh, and this particular location uh, of course we don't know who the customer is but having said that we also know something is moving right something is being sold uh, or being scanned at this time without awareness on part of anywhere into the details or the intricacies uh, involved right so the goal is that uh, we can and in fact uh, we have also recently built something where we have built an offline only authentication say for the africa market right sub-saharan africa right so we wanted to build something where uh, because there is a uh, you can say challenge with the internet communication or the data communication uh, in certain countries in sub-saharan africa so uh, we needed something which didn't require connection with internet and still anyone who is scanning should be able to verify the authenticity of that particular product, right? So we keep uh, this innovations going in discussion with uh, the industry or a particular customer, uh, right? But the goal is providing uh, not an additive, but rather a completely a new technology built from grounds up, uh, right? Which is uh, very secure, right? And of course, then it's also uh, substantiated with an easy scanning or verification process, right? Without needing to know details about what all pieces are in there in the puzzle, say for example. Right. So, I mean, given the dynamic nature of uh, transportation and logistics sector, what are the primary challenges mm -hmm. that most technology seeks to address? And how do your solution adapt to, you know, evolving industry demands? Yeah, interestingly, the, uh, say the transportation and logistics space, right? Mm. Uh, we have been seeing, uh, at least it has been in the news uh, since COVID time. You remember the Suez Canal uh, incident where one ship sort of blocked uh, the entire route. Uh, of course. Right? Um, right the more recently there have been news that uh, in the panama canal there has been no water and because of that they have been controlling the flow of ship right uh, then uh, you have all these pirates for example then there are geopolitical wars or tension right so today uh, while global trade um, is a norm uh, right but having said that uh, there are also so many possibilities of being disrupted right and for random things right which no one can account for right what we know is, say, a brand in uh, US, for example, is producing a certain good, for example, right? Um, or let's say IKEA, right? So in Europe, they have produced um, the furnitures, for example, and they are shipping it to, say, India market, uh, right? So IKEA knows based on the this demand in India, there is a certain amount of demand and they need to ship uh, their products here, right? So they are producing something at the end something is being sold because here consumers are waiting for ikea to deliver right now the the piece in the middle uh, right between them producing and sh say shipping or uh, from their warehouse once it goes out of their warehouse ikea warehouse for example right and if customer is purchasing for example is a complete black box right which means despite say all the um, this ERP systems, right? Enterprise resource planning systems and stuff like that, uh, which are connected today, more connected than ever, right? There is still this black box that uh, brands have no clue what is happening there. They know things are moving, right? But they have no visibility to what is moving, uh, right? Um, 
units of say furniture from europe uh, you might actually see in india there are more units coming in right whether it is locally or it is coming through the ports but you have certain number of more number of units coming in right and which is of course to fulfill the need of the customer right so maybe uh, ikea thinks there are 100 people going to buy uh, furniture in india for example but in fact the demand could be say 130 people right now the 30 people demand uh, extra will has it has to be fulfilled by someone right and that someone is the counterfeit because they understand the realities of the local market yeah, right so and that's that's the reason i say while everything is connected everyone knows my product is moving from uh, uh, maybe this particular shipper is taking my product for example and is moving through this space or my product is stuck or whatever it is right but the end market more things are being sold than was originally planned for by the brand for example and also interestingly the um, so our goal basically if you look at it is to sort of use a combination of solutions and again like i said it depends on the need of the particular brand and particular product also right what will work on that product so we have a combination of say visible and invisible solution right that sit on the packaging itself right so which means Every counterfeiter, when they produce a counterfeit good, the only innovation they bring to the table is replicating the packaging, right? And they will do anything and everything possible to kind of replicate the packaging, right? Whether it is uh, a coconut oil or an IKEA furniture or a pharmaceutical product, right? So if we say white product, we have seen uh, where instead of a white powder, say for pharmaceutical uh, use, uh, people has, uh, have put in, the counterfeiters have put in chalk powder. Uh, right i mean and that, that's the truth right so when and so which means they are also replicating the packaging right because it has to look like the original or whatever people think is the original right and that's uh, good enough right for me to go and tell okay i'll go and buy this for example right so i typically say a 3m mask will have 3m written on it right so the only thing that guy needs to do is put 3m and some probably the product number uh, in there that's all they have to replicate right because people have uh, before COVID, nobody bought a 3M mask, for example, right? But in COVID, there was, say, we all got to hear that, uh, say, N95 mask is needed, right? So everybody went and, but there was not enough N95 mask in the market, right? So what the counterfeiter will do is they'll make a lookalike mask and put uh, print N95 and 3M in there, right? That's it, right? So we will go and pay exorbitant price for a product which was not even worth it, right? And it gives us a false sense of security, uh, right? So our goal is pretty simple. We are, unlike there are many brands who will claim their technology cannot be duplicated and stuff like that, right? Our claim is not that. Our claim is if somebody attempts to duplicate our product, right? And every it will happen depending on the uh, how good the counterfeiter is, for example, right? It is important that we be able to differentiate between an original and a counterfeit. So when the product packaging or whatever is printed, right, that is duplicated along with our technology, we will be able to tell that this is a duplicate, right? Whether it's a photocopy, it's an attempted duplicate, whatever. And we have all those, um, you can say, when we scan, right, we also grade it based on whether it is an attempted duplication, whether it is um, uh, it's a very good duplicate or it's a bad duplicate and or it's an original, for example, right? So this is something that sort of um, differentiate us globally right because there are not many brands uh, which can do uh, a detection of a duplicate and their claim could be that nobody can duplicate but it's still duplicated right so our claim is that uh, while it is very difficult to duplicate uh, impossible to regenerate uh, right but if somebody tries to photocopy we can detect the photocopy right and that is very important Right? So we have checks and balances in multiple points, including the worst possible case, which is somebody replicating uh, or finding some means to replicate as is. Right? And our technology also sort of uh, is secure where we don't use any encryption per se, which means that uh, so when you use encryption, usually it is a combination of keys, for example. right? And usually humans... Uh, are innovating and humans are the threat, right? So which means say some employee in my company for whatever reason gets upset 
and says, okay, I'll sell this key to someone in the market, right? We know how data theft and all this stuff happen, uh, right? So somebody says, okay, I will uh, release this key to the counterfeiter and they can replicate uh, uh, this particular uh, technology, right? So our stuff relies on algorithm. There are no keys involved, which right. means there is, um, there is nothing that can be shared per se. So uh, I I'm, I'm I'm very glad we're having this discussion, but uh, you know being time bound, so we have ten minutes left and three questions. Sure. So sure. Uh, can you answer two questions in ten minutes? Sure. Yeah. So I'll I will. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I'll remove the you know like the next question, but I'll ask two question and then we we'll try to finish it in ten minutes. Yeah. So how does uh, news technologies ensure, you know, like data security and privacy in its transportation and logistics solutions, especially, you know, considering the sensitive nature of supply chain information? Yeah, so we take um, privacy and data security very seriously, uh, right? And uh, in fact, our technology, if you look at it, we don't rely on identifying a consumer to validate the technology, which means I don't need to know whether uh, Nisha or Kaushik is purchasing the technology, right? It can still tell whether the product is authentic or not authentic, right? Uh, on the uh, This is on the consumer side, of course. So on the brand side, we uh, allow the flexibility of hosting our solution either on, say, cloud, uh, any of this uh, standard cloud service providers uh, in the data center of a particular brand, uh, right? We have done that. And even today, say, because of GDPR and data privacy and localization policies of certain uh, geographies and government, so we also allow the uh, our servers to sit in that particular region, right? So if, uh, if our server needs to sit, say, in Africa, for example, uh, right, our solution will still work the same way. It is not dependent on where the solution is, uh, where our server is sitting, right? Or if it is sitting in a firewall in China, for example, it will still function there. Uh, I can't hear you, uh, Nisha. Hmm. So how does uh, NOS technologies, uh, you know, foster innovation and collaboration within the industry? And what opportunities does the company provide for startups, and entrepreneurs to leverage your platform. Yeah, so we are constantly on the lookout to understand uh, the new technologies which are coming up in the space, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are some innovations happening in academia, for example, again, globally, right? Uh, some are being done by, say, PhD students, for example, right? Uh, but what is also important is we sort of understand uh, how relevant that innovation uh, is to, for the industry, right? Whether somebody can build an innovation, uh, use an innovation in the industry is their practically aspect to it, right? So, so news is continuously working with the brands in different industries or sectors to, to understand the need and the, again, the need is evolving, right? And the counterfeiting threat is evolving, um, the business is evolving, so the need also is evolving, right? So we are sort of using that. Uh, we have also partnered with, um, say, companies, enterprise companies like SAP, for example, uh, right? So we have already integrated our solution, right? Which makes it easy for brands to say, uh, any enterprise-grade brand, right, to kind of adopt our solution. So um, on the startup space, we, we um, and maybe I'll use your platform also to advocate um, for D2C brands specifically, right? Because today the D2C brands, um, when they start, right, their own, the primary goal is how do I increase my outreach, right, or distribution, right? So they will usually use um, platforms like, say, Amazon, Flipkart, Blinkit, and uh, other such platforms, right, to get their product out, right? But what they're missing in the process, one is, um, of course, they're building the brand, right? But what they're missing is they don't know who is purchasing the product. Right, because most of these e-commerce platforms, right, they don't share their customer info with the brand. Right, it doesn't matter how much money you have. Right, they just don't share. Right, so which means I don't know whether Nisha is purchasing or some X Y Z person is purchasing. I just know maybe at max, maybe in Bangalore, this is the uh, this is the number of products which are sold. Right, but for a brand, it is very important, and uh, a particularly D two C brand is to understand the customer profile. 
which means what are the preferences that Nisha has as against Kaushik has, for example, uh, right? So we, so while counterfeiting is not a threat for a up, upcoming brand, for example, because nobody cares whose product is not being sold, right? A counterfeiter will not care uh, or invest that time, right? But they can start using our technology even before they launch their product, which means when they're releasing their first product being manufactured and sent into the market in the supply chain, they should use our technology and they will first understand the customer profile. They will also build a habit with the customer that, okay, there is a certain authentication or engagement process and all of this can be built, right? Not just authentication, but also consumer engagement, for example, right? They get to know about the customer and slowly over a period of time as the brand grows, right? Then they will start having this counterfeit thread, but then they already have a protection built in, right? So they are sort of working for the future and they have immediate benefits uh, in understanding the customer profile, uh, which the your middle platform is not going to share, right? And then in future, you're sort of also protected uh, through mm. our continuous innovation. So uh, looking ahead, what are the strategic priorities and future aspirations of loose technologies, particularly in terms of expanding its uh, you know, global footprint and enhancing its portfolio of services? So our immediate, um, uh, you can say, priority is to help the pharma and food industry uh, in India. Right. So there have been recent regulations, but uh, again, if you look back, the regulations are driven by incidents which has happened. Right. Somebody, uh, some kids in Africa died due to a cough syrup, for example. Right. Mm. I told you about chalk powder, for example. Right. And uh, there have also been cases where uh, the directors of uh, these pharma companies and food companies, right, they've been sent legal notices by the government. Right, whether Indian government or say FDA, US FDA, for example, uh, right, due to substandard product, right, and now uh, it's a very interesting problem because uh, if you cannot differentiate a counterfeit product, which is of course always be substandard, uh, right, uh, the government assumes that it's an original product, and if it's an original product which is substandard, it means there is something wrong with the manufacturing space. Right, which means a small problem like a counterfeit product caught in the market, maybe in a rural um, village, for example, right, could trigger an investigation into the manufacturing operation of the uh, brand, right? And uh, we know like traffic uh, rules, right? If a traffic cop catches you for one violation, right, maybe you have all the records and everything, and they have to let you go, but they will usually find some other problem. Uh, right so investigation into a manufacturing operation will lead to other skeletons lying in the cupboard right so the best thing is uh, our goal is sort of help these brands to stay um, protected in this dynamic landscape right uh, of course then we uh, globally we intend to expand into uh, north america and we are sort of looking at a fundraise uh, to help us with that right because i mean um, while we think America is the most innovative um, country in the planet, uh, more than 60, but there are some reports where, which indicate that more than 60% of American consumers consume fraudulent product or counterfeit products, uh, right? So that's the other side of the spectrum, right? So we are also continuously building uh, partnerships um, at dif with different value, like say SAP is one such partnership, but then there are different grades of partnership whom we are working with to expand uh, our, um, basically increase our outreach in the global market where we cannot uh, physically be present, right? So we are using uh, partners to sort of uh, help us with that outreach. Right? Yeah, so at so the end, the goal is to move to a counterfeit free world, right? We already built products and solutions, right? So only thing for us is now distribution and partners can help us with that. Okay, so it's a great uh, discussion we had today. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nisha. Thanks for the invitation again and uh, look forward to answering any questions that uh, your viewers may have. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.